Yeah, no, absolutely. So we do OT and IoT cybersecurity. We were the first really here in this space to establish a base in the UAE uh, covering the GCC. Since then we expanded. I joined the company from almost five years back. Previously I was at Cisco. Um, and 25% of global revenue for a company comes from the Middle East. So oil and gas and utilities really where the company grew up. So securing critical national infrastructure. Uh, as you can probably imagine, back 10 years back we were founded OT cybersecurity operational technology, the first players were really oil and gas and utilities. Very tangible. Someone takes out a power grid, someone takes out an oil oil rig. It, it's easy to quantify. So we've been around, like I said, for 10 years as a company, five years here, uh, covering. We started out with uh, utilities in oil and gas, like I mentioned. I thought it'd be pretty easy when I joined. I'm like, oh, it's only that many customers. How difficult can it be? And since then, we have metro stations, retails, airports, smart cities. So we're starting to kind of solve the same challenges that we've been solving for oil and gas and utilities uh, over the last 10 years. So now I would say maybe 60-70% of the revenue comes from traditional OT. Uh, what you would think of when you think operational technologies as in refineries and oil platforms, pipelines, power grids, that kind of stuff. Um, so what we're doing here is really just catching up with all our existing customers. Uh, we have around maybe 90-95% market share in the Middle East. Uh, we've got a strong first movers advantage. We're in all the oil and gas majors, all the big utility companies, major airports, even hospitals, retail, uh, etc. So. Um, yeah, for us, it's just continuing the trajectory, if that makes sense. Now, so, so I think, I mean, technology is one thing. We have good technology. There are a couple of others that have decent, good technology as well. Uh, it's a pretty high barrier of entry in the market. So going into OT and IoT cybersecurity is difficult if you come from IT cybersecurity, for instance. So that is one problem. But the main reason, I spoke to a VP of Gartner a couple of years back, and he said, Marcus, you know what the first question that the customer is asking is? They asked me, how many people do they have on the ground? How long have they been here? How invested are they? So I think specifically in the Middle East, customers are very sensitive to how invested you are in the company and how invested you are in the region. So my first thing that I did, I was the first man on the ground here, just myself. Now we have a team of around 20 or so. Um, my first thing that I did, started to establishing a significant professional services arm. So, so I think that has been one of the main things, the fact that we're not a, only a technology provider, but we can handhold the customer and the partner to the extent that they want. Uh, culturally, we're a yes, we can company. I think that means a lot. So a lot of the time I speak to customers and they said, I asked you guys a question. You came back within half an hour, an hour. You got a person on the ground within eight hours. It took me three weeks when I sent the same question to competition. And in the meantime, we've been there four, five, six times. So we have a fantastic team on the ground and you know, technology speaks for itself, but but without the team, technology wouldn't be where it is today. So there's been a huge shift. I wouldn't say a huge shift, there's been a huge evolution. So if you go back like, say 10, 12 years back, we had the first big headline making incidents. We know of Crisis and Triton and Aramco and you know, the big OT hacks. State sponsored, highly specific, day zero attacks, almost impossible if not impossible to, to protect against, especially with technology back then. That's what customers were scared of back then. That is still very much on the table, right? That can still happen. We still have geopolitics in this region, just as anywhere else, and, and the state-sponsored attacks. Very sophisticated things. That's something everyone's worried about. On top of that, the environment that we're protecting, they're a lot more exposed. They're not hermetically sealed. They are not air-gapped anymore. There is consultants coming in and out. People are connecting things to the cloud. So just the evolution of when we started here five years back, if we would have mentioned cloud to a traditional OT customer, they would have laughed you out of the room. If you'd said, we want to go in and query a number of select assets on your network to get additional information, they would have laughed you out of the room. That has completely changed. So the main players that's driving this is what we call OEMs. So the guys that manufacture the, the gas plants or the railways or whatever, they're talking about cloud. They're talking about digital twins. They're talking about predictive maintenance. And that all drives cloud and that all and the environment changes very quickly. So with that change, to come back to your original question, um, we also see a lot of additional threats, uh, surfaces that are opening up. 
the ones that we know and love from IT. So now it's ransomware, it's worms, it's viruses, it's people coming in with a laptop, they've been somewhere they shouldn't have been the day before, downloaded something, got infected. But the machines that are infected, they're still Windows machines, but they're the Windows machines controlling a drill rig or you know some, something that has a slightly different impact, right? So that is the main big driver as we see. Another thing that has changed is we have been able as a market that's evolved not only catering to cybersecurity requirements, because we're also seeing as the digitization happens in this environment and they change from just being OT to be a bit of IoT, a little bit more IT. The whole border between IT, IoT and, and, and OT is blurring a bit. And that also allows us to kind of assist the operational teams based on the same information that we use to do cybersecurity detection, we see the network, we see what goes on, and they can help them with troubleshooting, predictive maintenance, forensics, process forensics, these kind of things. So typically in any customer engagement, we start talking to the cybersecurity team, but then quickly the operation teams gets involved and say, oh, you know what? I had this downtime every Wednesday for half an hour. We don't really know what goes on, but we have some issues in the process. And someone could have stepped on a cable, maybe someone connected the router or something like that where it shouldn't be. So yeah, there's been a lot of a lot of changes in the uh, in the threat landscape and also the way that we go to market as a company. And it's happening a lot quicker. I think we all knew it's going to happen, but it's happening so much quicker than I would have anticipated. So five years ago, I would be saying five years from today, we would have moved 20, 30 percent of the distance that I think we have moved today. So it's probably going three, four times quicker than I anticipated. I think I'm going to go against the current here. If you look around yourself at Jitex, this is the busiest it's ever been. I've been in the Middle East for eight years. I think everyone's just aching to get out, have those face-to-face -face conversations, meeting customers, partners, system integrators, technical alliances, and just reconnecting with people and also connecting with new people. For us, it's, it's essential. It's extremely important for us. And also due to the place we have here in the markets, you know, this is a market we're serving. And of course, it's natural for us to be here. Uh, not being here would be a uh, raise eyebrows.